So I love Nicolas Cage movies. I think he always brings something interesting to the table, whether that's good or bad, um, but I always enjoy his performance. So today I am watching the Patreon voted 1994 film Guarding Tess. I don't know much about this. I know Nick Cage is in this obviously, but I don't know the plot. I don't know the director. I don't know anything like that. Uh, I don't really know what to go off by the title. He'll be guarding a person named Tess. I'm assuming it's a literal title, but thank you so much for sharing in this first time watching with me. If you have any other suggestions for Nicolas Cage movies you think I should watch, please comment below. And if you're ever curious about what gear I use or what's on the bookshelf, I've included a link in the description. And if you want to have a say in what movies or TV shows I watch, be sure to join Patreon. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel and check back often for more awesome content. Okay, he brings dinner with the, or brings breakfast with his gun. It's been fun. Is he leaving for the day or is he quitting his job or? Shirley MacLaine, okay, I've heard her name before but I don't think I've seen her in a ton of movies. Very 90s so far. I'm guessing it's gonna be something like He's taking care of somebody named Tess and uh, maybe like driving Miss Daisy or something, like if she's like an older lady. Because I feel like Shirley MacLaine is at this point would have been older. Um, but yeah, that's my kind of like only real. I haven't seen Driving Miss Daisy, but that's like my only kind of prediction so far. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, it sounds like he wants to get back to like a more high profile, you know, some more action. Call him and tell him uh, you said no. Why don't you take a moment to think it over? Yeah, I feel like uh, he doesn't have much choice here. Yeah, he doesn't obviously want to go back. Uh, he was pretty happy to leave, so... And yeah, I'm curious why she's so important, if the president specifically is asking for this guy to watch her. Yeah, he's obviously not excited to be back. And yeah, she must be very important if A, she needs this kind of detailed attention and having people watch her constantly. So I'm curious to find out more about her character. I have an inoperable brain tumor. Oh. I have bought you and your men a Spud missile launcher. What? We are going to the opera in Columbus. Which of those do you think is true? Yeah, I was like, what game are we playing here? I'll put my rosebud on the tray and get out. As you can see, I'm extremely busy. I don't understand why she would keep him around just to patronize him. Like, it, they obviously don't get along. So, he doesn't want to be there. She doesn't seem like she wants him there other than to just berate him. Like, it's a weird situation for sure. Some kind of goddamn food drink or something? What do we look like? Waiters? Are we a bunch of waiters? We want to be down there! Yeah, he obviously wants to be in with the action, protecting the president and not uh, bringing this lady your breakfast. So, what is it you want, man? I want to play golf. That's what her emergency was? What? Play it, do you remember that? This is Carlisle, it's 38 degrees outside. Thank you, Tom. Could you have the car ready? I'm guessing that's Fahrenheit, and that's yes. probably cold. Come on! She rings her emergency button because he didn't get there fast enough, and she just wants to go play golf. Oh, man. That would be, uh, I feel like your patience would only get so far. Oh man. And she's definitely not making it easy on them. Yeah, they're all bundled up golfing. He's just like miserable and hating his life choices right now. I feel like there's gonna be some good cage rage moments, like he had a few where he was freaking out and I feel like she's gonna annoy him to the point where he's gonna lose his mind, so I'm looking forward to that. Some cage rage. Okay, yeah, so she was like a recluse or something for five years and didn't leave the house really and now she's out doing stuff all of a sudden. He's like, okay, yeah, if I'm gonna stay then I'm gonna do, like, I'm not doing any of these errands for you anymore, I'm just gonna do what I'm being paid here to be for basically and that's to protect you, so not bringing you breakfast anymore. It seems like a very weird situation that neither of them want to be in. Nice, Doug, that's what I wanted to hear. You have yourself a nice evening, son. Yes, sir. Night. Oh, man, he's screwed. He's screwed. She's just going to tattle to the president. 
you know, no big deal if uh, he doesn't do exactly what she wants because she's a child and is having a temper tantrum. You don't listen to me? Okay, well, I'm going to call everybody's boss, the president, and uh, complain, and then he'll call you, and uh, yeah, then you're stuck. Power struggle, and it's just like, who's going to have the biggest temper tantrum, and who's going to dig their heels in the most and not move, and they both seem very stubborn, so... But, like, ultimately, I feel like he's going to lose, because if she's got the president in her back pocket, then... Jesus Christ, it let her sit on the hood if she wants to. It does, yeah. Like, at what point do you stop, you know, fighting these battles and just let her do whatever she wants? Like, uh, she's obviously made up her mind that she's not going to play nice. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh-oh. Busted. Falling asleep at the opera. What do you care where she sits? Yeah, it seems like she's more annoyed the fact that she even has to have this type of protection. You know what they want, private security? They want guys that can bench press 9,000 pounds. At least, yes. This is a good deal. You'd let it get personal. Yeah, it does seem like, a, like as difficult as she has to work with. It seems like relatively straightforward. Of course it is. and Nancy Reagan. In their prime? Yeah. Mrs. Carlisle would knock Nancy out in the 67th round. Go <laughs> to the distance? No. Earl? Go. Mrs. Carlisle, I can't. Who got you this job? Did they or did I? She's leaving them at the gas station? Uh... Yes. She's like, see y'all later. I'm taking off. I don't want this anymore. Bye. Doug, Doug, she took off. Sneaky, sneaky, this Miss Carlisle. We go in there and talk to him, okay? Doug? He's like, no, I'm mad. I want to talk about this right now. I want you to go in there and tell her to meet me in the office. Okay? All right, just the driver, you know. Oh, shoot. Oh, he's beating up the driver. Oh, you're a fire girl, trust me. I think he's made it pretty clear that uh, Miss Carlisle has the final say, so... The nurse. No, they work for you. But this guy works for us, and he's gone. Cage rage. Yes. My chauffeur. And he's dead. Oh, screaming match. Here we go. Who can yell the loudest? Always a fun game. To remind you that you can refuse Secret Service protection anytime you want. Oh, okay. I believe you already know that. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, so it seemed like she was like being genuine for half a second and actually wanted him to stay and she knows she's not following the rules obviously, but is also trying to like live her life, whatever that is, even if it's an hour being alone in a car. This morning she has refused secret service protection. Where the hell did she get an idea like that? Uh yeah. Lunatic breaks into the house and cuts a goddamn pole. What about that? Well, I agree, sir. I do you think President's calling him while he's on the toilet. Uh, I'd be honored. I'll be there. Thank you. All right. Have a nice day, pal. <laughs> so I will. He goes from, like, a rage to calm and, like, you know, actually come over for dinner, but I'm going to yell at you for a while first. Like, <laughs> yeah, if she's refused her secret service, and yeah, he's like, it's more about what the public thinks. Took your advice. I did what you wanted. Now leave me alone. Driver. Yeah, she's like, you didn't want to be here, so I finally made that possible, and now you're back? Like, yeah, and it's basically because the president's saying he has to. It's not really his choice. Yes. She does have the brain tumor. Oh, man. People of your stature uh, to endorse the project. Uh-huh. It's not a social visit. It's a work visit. Oh, 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 God, that would hurt. Well, you came out here to ask me something. What was that about? Well, I was wondering if you'd like to have a cup of coffee. Ha <laughs> Yeah, like, for all their differences, they seem to have one thing in common, at least, is that they she obviously cared about her husband, well, and he was... Like he was obviously concerned about, like, the president as well, and wanted to protect him, so... 
Yeah. Yeah, she seems to be more like, they said she never comes out of the kitchen. She's coming out of the kitchen now. And Nick Cage's character seems to be like bending the rules a little bit more. So you think they're dull too? <laughs> yeah, they've kind of formed this like weird friendship. Oh my, look at this closet. Which of these exemplifies elegant disdain yet sincere concern? <laughs> it's a fine balance. The red. You could, you know that. You are very good. Yeah, there's like this weird power struggle and now that the president's coming, he's like excited again because it seems more like as what he wants to be doing. Price check on the sore baby peas. Repeat the sore baby peas. <laughs> two for 59. They're on special today. Two for 59. <laughs> uh, copy that. It's two for I mean, it's a two for one thing, so I suggest you go ahead and get both. Uh, copy that, Doug, but I believe we've lost interest in peas. Repeat, lost interest in peas. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so weird to just like narrate her entire shopping experience Someone and like. Is smoking in a grocery store. The importance of peas <laughs> and their prices. Yeah, and like smoking in public places. Yes, Yes, The lady uh, who was doing her hair reminded me of um, there was a show called, I think it was just called Mama or something, but the main character was this boisterous old lady, and I think it was actually played by someone who was like in their 30s. They just covered over in like a bunch of makeup and stuff, but I used to watch that show all the time. The president's not coming. Matters of she was so excited about it and was looking forward to it and like did all these things to get ready. Mm. Oh no! I hope she's just asleep. Hey! Oh, it was a trick. What? Oh, come on. Let's go, Washington. Yeah, maybe this was a plan with her driver or something. I don't know. You disgust me. That's not helping, sir. Driver unconscious on the front seat. Oh. Mrs. Carlisle was not at the same. What? Mr. President, Tess Carlisle has been kidnapped. I don't, uh, I don't know if that's what's happened. I feel like she tried to make a break for it. That's the best thing to do. Thanks. Okay, yeah, so she was kidnapped. They left a ransom note. Get any personal stuff and get out. And now, yeah, everybody knows about the brain tumor. Cigarette lighter, right there in the door. Makes a little round crescent shape burn. Yeah. How's it going? You getting anywhere? Yeah, I knew she attacked him. I knew it. She was making a run for it, this little lady. No, of course it's not. See, you should be asking him the questions. Hated your guts. Are they trying to set it up like he organized this or something? We're going to have to have you available to us, Mr. Fowler. At our convenience. Oh, okay. He wants to kill me. Good God, does that tell you anything? Come on, Doug. I'm telling you to holster your pistol. Ah! I'm going to count to five and... Oh my. Not the toe. Doug. Listen, I don't know anything. Will you just get that through your <gasps> Oh my god, he meant it. He shot the man's toes off. We don't have time to meet his water. Why are you a hawk? God help me. Cage rage. Farmhouse. Okay. I oh. Farmhouse. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think so. No. Oh. oh my god. Really? Listen, it's my sister and her husband. Check it out, Doug. It wasn't my idea. Oh my god. <laughs> they paid me to it. The driver's sister and husband kidnapped. And they're holding a ransom for 15 million. Oh. Or it's all just a ruse and nobody's there. Yeah, wouldn't the car have like some kind of tracking device or something? Oh my god, they buried her alive! Yeah, I hope she's okay. Oh man, this took a turn. I honestly thought she was just gonna like make a run for it and like would be in Florida or something, living her best life. 
Oh, that'd be terrifying. Oh, poor lady. Yeah, she wants you on the chopper. Now 22 hours. Oh, I said this so obvious. <laughs> She's like scolding him. In the goddamn chair. Uh, a turning point, perhaps? Will she listen to him? Okay, here we go. Compromise, uh-huh. Oh, and it looks like her daughter's there now. Is that she's falling behind with their family? Okay. So that was my first time watching the 1994 Nicolas Cage film, Guarding Tess. Um, it wasn't my favorite Nicolas Cage movie overall, but I still enjoyed it. It was heartwarming and had some funny moments for sure. Um, and I liked how they became friends at the end of the film and kind of put away their differences and seemed to work together and be willing to compromise and weren't so stubborn. Um, I haven't seen a ton of movies with Shirley MacLaine. Comment below what is she most known for? Um, but yeah, it was nice to see her on camera finally as I've heard her name a bunch of times. There was definitely some good cage rage moments when he was freaking out, um, especially that scene in the hospital when he shoots that guy in the toe. He was not having it. He's like, I'm done with this. I need to find her. Um, honestly, I thought she had just ran away as she had done that a few times before. So I thought maybe her and the driver had some kind of plan um, to escape and that she would just go off and not deal with the Secret Service anymore. Um, but that was obviously not the case as we find out she was in fact actually kidnapped um, and in this pretty horrible situation and luckily Nicolas Cage's character was able to rescue her and bring her out. We find out Tess is in fact the former president's uh, wife and that the president had passed away and he's no longer president obviously um, and that's why she has a secret service detail because in the public's opinion she's still someone of value and she's still you know very important to the public even though she doesn't have an official title or official role so much in government or politics or anything like that um, but she was definitely a very spunky character and I don't know it'd be someone I'd want to work with she seemed very um, a bit hard-headed and very stubborn and her way or the highway kind of thing and as much as she seemed to want Nicolas Cage's character there she definitely didn't make it easy for him and the beginning I was like is this just gonna be a movie about them fighting for 90 minutes because I don't want to deal with that like that seems just like frustrating is that there's no resolution but obviously we see them come together at the end um, and have that bond but yeah the first half of the movie I was like you don't want him there he doesn't want to be here like I'm sure someone else can fill this position um, but I did feel bad for her because obviously She's as difficult as she was. I don't think it was a position she wanted to be in, obviously. Um, she did end up kicking them out at some point, which then brought them back, but she just has these strangers who were hired to be in her house basically for the rest of her life um, which we also found out she has a brain tumor and her whole like day and her schedule is just kind of uh, it doesn't seem like she has a lot of privacy obviously her whole world is kind of stuck around having the Secret Service come with her and having her fall to the grocery store and if she wants to go do this they have to always be with her so uh, I feel like she was probably annoyed that that she couldn't live the life she wanted to because she had so many restrictions on her so I did did feel bad for her that way and it did seem like she was pretty lonely and maybe that's why she reaches out to Doug, uh, Nicolas Cage's character, and tries to form this friendship with him towards the second half of the movie since it doesn't seem like she's super close with her children either um, and I assume her husband was probably her best friend and when he's no longer there that there's a giant hole in her life basically. I like that there were some elements of comedy in this as well as much as I would have loved some more Nick Cage one-liners and some more Cage Rage moments from him but but uh, I think my favorite scene was when they're in the grocery store and she's doing that price check on the peas and they're both like talking into their wrists and confirming the price of peas. It was a two for one special and just going back and forth and making this what would be a normal situation just even more intense and extreme because she has the secret service with her and you know, if normally a person goes to the grocery store, they can just price check the item or talk to the manager themselves, but she just asked the Secret Service to do it for her, and just that going back and forth between that and the manager was pretty funny. I wasn't expecting, uh, like I said, the driver to be involved in the kidnapping. I didn't think it was an actual kidnapping at all. I thought she just ran away, but then we find out that the driver's sister and her husband had actually kidnapped uh, Tess and were holding her hostage for $15 million, and 
that was actually a really intense situation and you're just trying to figure out, okay, is she okay? Is she alive? And you know she also has these pre-existing medical conditions that are making things more complicated and luckily she was able to make it out there, but I think it would have been a much darker film if she had in fact passed away and the effect that that would have had on Nicolas Cage's character. I'm glad they went the more lighthearted, heartwarming tone and we see them getting into the helicopter and she kicks everybody out basically and says, no, I want my team and my team only. I want my secret service people and I think um, before when Nicolas Cage's character felt like, okay, she doesn't want me here anyway, and then I think that his attitude kind of switched a little when, well, also when he realized that something bad might have happened to her, he, I think that always makes you appreciate something when you realize it's going to be taken away. Um, so that obviously brought them closer, and the fact that she was like, okay, I need you, people are still out trying to get me, even if it is my driver's family trying to hold me ransom. So they didn't say what happened to the driver or the driver's family but I'm assuming they were charged and sent to prison and then um, when she's calling the president at the end and gets the president just to clear the charges against Nicolas Cage because yes he did fire on somebody's toes in a hospital and used force and had also like roughed up the driver before when the driver had just taken off. Overall I enjoyed it uh, like I said I don't think it's my favorite Nick Cage movie I like the one where he's just like over the top extreme crazy cage rage moments one-liners this felt more like a uh, comedic drama heartwarming film um, definitely had some moments but uh, I still like some more gauge rage um, but yeah it was interesting to see this character kind of he starts off leaving his job he's like you know what I'm done I'm out of here I don't have to deal with this lady anymore I've put up with her for three years I'm out and then of course she requests that he comes back and um, throughout the course of the movie we obviously see their bond shift and change and he I'm hoping he's deciding to stay it sounds like he's gonna stay for the next three years or whatever his term will be with her um, and I think she maybe realizes that maybe she had been acting a bit too harsh um, and just pushing people away and they both kind of need to compromise but uh, yeah it was interesting when she decides to get in the wheelchair at the end also and we see her being rolled out and everybody's applauding and she's got her flowers but thank you so much for sharing in this first time watching with me if you have any other suggestions for Nicolas Cage movies you think I should watch please comment below and as always, please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel, and check back often for more awesome content. Laundry in a whopper. Gooch, she's just gonna tattle to the president. Uh-oh, busted, falling asleep at the opera. She's leaving them at the gas station. The importance of peas and their prices. Oh, she does have the brain tumor, oh man. My God, they buried her alive. Oh my God, he meant it. He shot the man's toes off.